Greetings Hunters. In this video, we'll talk about the best ways to effectively deal with Barioth's moves. Many hunters have mentioned that Barioth was their first major challenge in Iceborne. To many hunters, Barioth is fast, aggressive, and most of all, relentless. In my opinion, his relentlessness is mainly due to the fact that Barioth's attacks are extremely fast and have moderate recovery animations at best. However, Barioth's relentlessness is also his main weakness, simply because of one idea. We can take it away from him. Before we dive into the moves, I'd like to highlight this important information. The nature of Barioth's moves doesn't give him many options to effectively harass hunters who are within this area. Let's go ahead and call this the sweet spot, which is the area immediately in front of Barioth and in between his two front limbs. Just as important, however, is the area behind it, which is actually a danger zone. Take note of this as well. The body check is arguably Barrett's most infamous move. It's quite fast and has a large hitbox starting from the head to the base of the tail. However, this move actually has a very small amount of active hitboxes, and it is not too hard to iframe roll through this. The trick is to pay attention to Barrett's foot stomp. You can either use it as a visual cue or you can listen and use it as an audio cue. It doesn't really matter which direction you roll to, but preferably you'll want to roll towards a position where you can do some counterattacks on the wings. Our main goal in the early stages of a Barrett fight is of course to break both of his front limbs. The recovery animation for the move is generous, but make sure not to overcommit with your attacks. By breaking Barrett's two front limbs, you take away his relentlessness. Several of his previously deadly moves will now have longer recovery animations which you can easily punish. For the body check, you have an option to either roll through his body, that way you have good access to attack his tail, or you can roll away from Barrett so that you will be positioned close to the head and arms for a good counterattack. The good news about Barriott's tail sweep is that it can be iframed. You have to roll through the tip of the tail and near the end of the attack animation. The bad news is that this is extremely difficult to do. This move has long active hitboxes, lingering hitboxes, an irregular trajectory, and it has a tendency to hit you from behind the camera angle. All of these factors make it very difficult to visually calculate your roll timing. Fortunately, there are other ways to effectively deal with this move. One way is to simply outspace it. Another way is to move to the opposite side of the attack. A thing to note is that the tail sweep only covers half the area of Barriott's front side. And lastly, the most effective and safest method is to move under Barriott's body. This is a safe zone. By being in the green sweet spot, we can easily roll to safety anytime Barriott does the tail sweep. This would also be a good time to do some counter attacks.
The ice breath is easily countered by staying away from the previously mentioned danger zone. Just like any other fast projectile attack, this move can be iframe rolled through. However, if you are in the danger zone, even if you perfectly roll through the projectile, you'd still be hit by the subsequent ice tornado. The best way to deal with this move is to simply strafe sideways and move towards barrier to do some counterattacks. If Barrier is exhausted, nothing will come out when it does this attack. Feel free to attack him at this point. When talking about Barriot's flying moves, the straightforward answer is that you should simply keep moving sideways or move to the area under him. There isn't really anything you can do at this point and you'll have to wait for Barriot to fly down again. He has two types of landing attacks. One where he does a 180 degree turn upon landing, and the other where he does a taunt afterwards. This one has a considerably longer recovery animation. In this move, Barrieth does two steps before doing a forward pounce. During this move, the head becomes a hitbox, and the arms become soft hitboxes. To properly dodge this, watch out for the initial two steps. Move a bit to the side, and then roll through Barrieth's wings. The wing attack serves as Barrier's punisher for hunters who overcommit on their attacks. It has a wide sweeping range that comes out very fast. As long as you don't overcommit however and if you stay within the sweet spot, this move is very dodgeable. It's not easy to punish this move as it has a fast recovery. After dodging it successfully, your next course of action would be to quickly move yourself into the sweet spot and read his next move. The Roaring Leap is like the stronger version of Barriot's Pounce. It hits harder than the Pounce but it is also relatively much slower. The dodging technique for this move is also the same. You hear the roar, you move to the side, and then you roll through the wings. Similar to the wing attack, you shouldn't immediately counter Barrieth after he does this attack. Instead, move into the sweet spot and try to read his next move. However, if Barrieth's front limbs are broken, this move ends with Barrieth doing a long recovery animation. In this case, you should do your counter attacks. On its own, Barriot's sidestep is not really a deadly move. However, the danger comes from the fact that Barriot can immediately follow up the sidestep with any of his deadlier attacks. The best course of action here is to simply keep yourself moving towards the sweet spot and to keep your camera on Barriot at all times. It is very important that you read which move he will do next as that will decide what your next course of action should be. However, if both front limbs are broken, 
the sidestep suddenly becomes Barriot's biggest disadvantage. Every time he does this move, he will stumble into a long recovery animation. Every time this happens, you are free to punish him with counterattacks. The Jump Slam is Barriot's deadliest move as it deals a lot of damage and it leaves you pinned on the ground if you're hit. If you manage to roll out of the way, he can still affect you with Tremor effects. However, it is actually not too hard to dodge this move as it only has a small amount of active hitboxes. The trick is to first move away from him a bit and then follow with the dodge once the only thing you can see from him is his tail. This move has a very long recovery animation, so feel free to punish with your strongest attacks. And that's pretty much it folks. If you stick around a bit, you'll see me apply these techniques in a real hunt. Surprisingly, this hunt of mine made it as the second fastest clear time for Barioth under the time attack wiki rules. So I'm quite happy with the end result here. Hopefully this guide will help hunters who are struggling with Barioth or hunters who just overall want to improve on their gameplay. I realize that there are countless guides out there that only talk about counter builds, uh, using traps, using flinch shots, using mantles and the likes. Uh, but I've always thought that these are things that are already obvious to the average hunter. And I don't feel that those guides actually address the real issue in why people find certain monsters difficult. That issue being how to effectively deal with the monster's moves and when to do counter attacks properly. This is why I've decided to create the Artful Dodger series, as I want to influence more players to focus on the mechanics of the game rather than rely on overpowered builds and tactics. I, I guess I just find the game much more beautiful and artful if I approach it that way. Anyway, thanks again for watching the video and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the hunt.